Tuck at the lens. Okay. How many? Tuck at the lens. Okay. How many of these beautiful dresses do you have? Every day, such a beautiful dress. It's unfortunately one of my How was your morning? Yeah, it was very insightful. I learned a lot of around the um, parents, the way that the parents um, are spoken to in the in the classes mm -hmm. and in the information sessions. And we learnt for the first time around the um, the pregnancy classes that are held. I didn't know that mm -hmm. previously. Mm -hmm. That was new information for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you come from so far, from Australia, to be here. Yes, yes. It's a long way, but every time I come, I learn more and more. The um, it's and it's not just. Uh, on the day or in the day after I know Ruth was we were talking yesterday around what would we change and is there anything we would change and to me it needs to ruminate to really mm -hmm. sit with you mm -hmm. for some time and before you really uh, have a really sound understanding of this way mm -hmm. but it's it's an absolute gift and what I've been un trying to understand more and more that this is a way of leading it's, it's a leadership um, theory and um, oh, this is what's going on in my head is around the essence of leadership. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you Rose. Mm. Well, you're a leader in your job, right? I, I am, correct, yes. But it's a way of being and I think leadership is around a way of being with people and it starts as you were just saying around it comes from the hands to the heart to the head you know, or from there but it starts here and this is the essence and every time I, I come I, I you sit and your hands say everything. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's this. How was the morning for you, Ruth? Um, as always, when I come here and, you know, have the real um, privilege of sitting in front of these people who have such deep knowledge of this work and so much experience with it, and at the same time are so humble. <laughs> You know, like Sylvie was saying that they're doing this new, they're testing out a new way of meeting with the parents who are in the parent-infant classes. And she says, we're experimenting, we're learning, and somebody in the room, oh, I know, asked, Jeanette, Jeanette asked if um, they give parents questionnaires before these mm -hmm. meetings, mm -hmm. questions to think about. And she said, no, but I think that's mm -hmm. a good idea, and I'm going to think about that, yeah. and she wrote it down. Mm -hmm. So... But mostly it's just like, I, I just soak it up. It's like wonderful information and insights mm -hmm. and knowledge and experience. And I, you know, Anna keeps telling me not to be a missionary, but I can't help it. I want the whole world to know about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know you've taken this to Israel, where you live. Yeah. yeah. And you're doing I'm parenting trying. classes there. I do parent-infant classes in Israel and we have a Facebook group of about now we're up to about 330 mostly moms who communicate with each other about Rye and Pickler and trying to do it with their kids and succeeding and there's a bunch of um, daycare centers and women's organizations that run daycare centers that like this approach and may even have some information about it on their website wow. and yeah so Great it's group. it's slowly I don't have so much patience for it to grow so slowly, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's growing slowly. I'd That's like there the to be way, more people in Israel who are, you know, on the path to being trained, but mm -hmm. for now, mm -hmm. it's just me. Mm -hmm. And Daniela, this is the first time we've met. Yes. You're doing wonderful work in Germany. Thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What elements of the Pickler pedagogy are you able to apply in your setting at home? Well, actually, um, this morning when I heard about the pregnancy classes, I thought, oh, I would love mm. to implement that. Because what I sometimes um, experience is that parents come to my group when the children are seven or eight or nine or even ten months old. Mm. And sometimes they say, oh, I wish I could have come earlier mm. to experience the observation and to start to build trust in my child at an earlier stage. So when I experienced this, I started groups from, for children at the age of three to four months. And now I'm thinking of, oh, it would be lovely mm. to implement groups um, where I can talk to parents 
when they're still or when the mother is still pregnant mm -hmm. and then having them in my groups when the babies are there so that was actually I didn't know they um, offer groups for pregnant women um, yeah and I think I will mm -hmm. I will think of is it is there a possibility that I can do that at mm -hmm. home one of the things that really impresses me about the participants that come you are all experts already in the field you have decades of experience leading parent child groups working uh, with leading caregivers managing centers mm -hmm. and yet you come back to learn some more mm -hmm. you know you wonder what more is there to learn mm -hmm. right so Liz for example you have a very beautiful uh, way of working with the parents and with the children. What brings you back to learn more? And what is it that you're learning now? Hmm. Um, I think I'll just say what I was talking to Ruth about earlier in the break, that for me it's, it's hard to talk about because it's still this sort of new growth, new kind of treasure that I'm holding that hopefully will take root. But it's this idea that the observation of the child, our, my observation and the parent's observation is a, is a gift, it's a treasure. And when parents really want to know, you know, I have this problem at home with um, you know he's he doesn't get to sleep and he you know and he's not eating or um, those are all valid questions and, and and valid feelings but the times I've been able to say oh well, let's just observe and we turn the observation the attention back to the child and the ob observation of the child either in class or I'll say well let's just see if you observe at home for this next week, what happens before this incident, what happens after, during, and then we'll talk again. Then the, the parent can come to her own solution to the problem. So anyway, the, the thing that's this treasure that's growing in me is how then do I maybe shift my classes a little bit so that this is really the valued part and convey how valuable the simple thing of observation is to slow down because we're so fast in the world now. Everything has to be done now and we have to know now. What about just holding a question? What about just waiting for the answer from within? So I don't know how it will take an external form, but that's what I'm hoping for. Thank you. Okay. Beautiful. The detail? The, the detail, it's the depth of the detail and the the, the moments and the, and I, I love the way that Anna, I always leave here with more questions than when I came with. Yes. <laughs> so we always know that if we ask a question, we're going to get a question back. And that constant reflection and, and the thinking and whether that takes 12 months or another two years before we're back again, mm -hmm. it sits with us. Yes. you know and constantly challenge us as in thinking and I remember even the last time I met you Danielle last mm. year is just hearing your involvement and the, what you're doing mm. now in your work since mm. 12 months ago it's, mm. it's that continuation and I think that that's something really special about the people that come here is that that wanting mm. of learning of the ongoing learning and, and thirst for more information and in the detail mm. Mm. yeah and I think all of us who are here we feel that the learning never ends it yeah. never stops it's like a like a river you know and we are never at the end of knowing things there's yeah. always as you said mm -hmm. new questions that bring us further or deeper into the things mm -hmm. we think about mm -hmm. which is what we want for the child right yeah it's yeah. what we want for the child mm -hmm. so it's this continual um, curiosity of life and the wonderment of it all. So, yeah. What I wanted to say was that you know people who are early child professionals get you know different kinds of professional training and degrees mm -hmm. and this and that but 
there's no other place that has what this place has. Mm -hmm. It's it's a gem, and I feel like it's a secret gem, and not enough people know about it. But you know, Emmy Pickler developed something incredibly special um, because she had she was like a visionary, and I think she I think like Steiner, she had the ability to see beyond the kind of every day what you see on the surface and she was like a genius in that way and so she developed this way of being with children that is what they basically you know what they practiced here for 60 years and still practice and what they teach here so I think a lot of people come back for this very specific mm -hmm. yes. information and knowledge you really can't get I mean you know there's Rye in America which is pretty similar but other than that you can't really get this in too many other places and this is the source and it continues to develop like in the child care center and in the their parent child classes so we come mm -hmm. back to mm -hmm. learn what they're learning new about from mm -hmm. the root of Emmy Pickler's work mm -hmm. yeah. it's true I wanted to ask Lisa mm -hmm. What was your impression? Because you've taken the Pickler mm -hmm. trainings in the mm -hmm. U.S. Mm -hmm. with Anna when, and Agnes mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. she travels uh, to the U.S. to give the trainings. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is your first time My here. My first time here. Right. I've been wanting to come for years, ever since I took my first foundations course in Rye and learning about Dr. Pickler. And um, so this is really a dream come true for me to be here in the essence of where it all started and meeting everyone. Um, you know, to, the whole entire week has been valuable and today I brought a video of my class which was dissected by experts <laughs> in the field um, and we all learned so much about yeah. it, including myself. Mm -hmm. So just bringing that video, that piece of a piece of my class to have feedback and to be able to have it analyzed, like every detail was very special. Yeah. I'm, I'm what about you, Elsa? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for you back. Get out of here. You want me to talk? <laughs> yeah, well, I'd like to know what what is why what has this become your it's passion? It's a good question because, as you know, I came to this mm -hmm. as a mother first. Yeah. Looking for ways on how I would raise my son. And then seeing how this really worked for me to learn to observe him, mm -hmm. to be able to have conversations with him, mm -hmm. to see him as a human being. Yeah. And that now he's almost 18 and we have such a beautiful connection and respect for each other. And I think that's, that's my drive, to be able to share what I was able to have with my son, with yeah. others. Because you can have a better world if you are kind with others. Yes. Yes. And to see my son be so kind with others, mm -hmm. and to see Emmy Pickler's work there, mm -hmm. in him already. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate to be able to bring him here last year. Mm -hmm. ah to meet Anna, mm. to you. sit here. And Anna invited us to the opera. Mm. Mm. And it was after I was in Israel with you. And I was asking him what, what was his favorite part of his whole trip. And he said going to the opera mm. with Anna. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you oh, see, so I am yeah. getting so many gifts mm. that are benefiting my life personally. Mm. That is why I am wanting to share that with others and making beautiful friends like you. <laughs> thank you. So thank you for sharing your voice. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Ruth. Sure. We were hoping to catch Anna coming in in her car. Oh, oh, oh. she 